हेलो फ्रेंड्स टूडे टॉपिक इज परिमेबल पेमेंट्स परिमेबल पेमेंट्स ऑल्सो नॉन एज पॉरस और परवियस पेमेंट इज ए हार्ड सरफेस दैट अलाउस वाटर टू सी थ्रू टू द ग्राउंड बिलो इनस्टेड ऑफ वाटर रनिंग ऑफ द सरफेस एंड इन टू स्ट्रॉन्ग वाटर ड्रेन और नियर बाई वाटर बॉडीज परमेबल पेमेंट अलाउ द वाटर टू बी एब्जॉर्ब इन टू द ग्राउंड which helps to reduce flooding erosion and pollution and as the water seeps through the surface some of it sticks to the pavement and gradually dries out and it effectively cools the pavement surface and surrounding air which means that it drastically reduces the heat island effect permeable pavements can be made from a variety of materials like porous asphalt which is used on highways to remove excess water or pervious concrete which is suitable for large areas like parking lots and residential driveways it can also be permeable interlocking concrete pavement that can be used for sidewalks driveways and parking areas or it is single sized aggregate also known as loose gravel this type is often used in low speed applications like driveways and pathways there are several benefits of permeable pavements and these can be broadly classified into two groups one is hydrologic benefits another is cold weather benefits permeable pavements help reestablish a more natural hydrologic balance and reduce runoff volume by trapping and slowly releasing precipitation into the ground instead of allowing it to flow into storm drains and out to receiving waters as effluent and this same process can also reduce the peak rate of discharge by preventing large fast pulses of precipitation through the storm water system permeable pavements can reduce the concentration of some pollutants either physically like by trapping it in the pavement or soil or chemically like bacteria and other microbes can break down and, and utilize some pollutants or it can be biologically also like plants that grow in between some type of pavers they can trap and store pollutants also by slowing down the process permeable pavements can cool down the temperature of urban runoff reducing the stress and impact on the stream or lake environment by controlling the runoff at the source such as a parking lot permeable pavement can also reduce the need for a larger management of rainwater which saves money and effort and for cold weather benefits these pavements can reduce need to apply road salt for deicing in the winter time researchers have observed that permeable asphalt only needs 0 to 25% of the salt routinely applied to normal asphalt and some other studies have found that the air trapped in the pavement can store heat and release it to the surface promoting the melting and thawing of snow and ice let us understand how it works the porous asphalt is built with a top layer that allows water to pass through quickly without pooling the pavement is constructed over an uncompacted subgrade to maximize infiltration an underlying stone bed stores water and slowly allows it to seep into the soil This stone bed is typically 18 to 36 inch deep. Then the water drains through the porous asphalt and into the stone bed. The stone bed can be connected to a storage bed to collect the rain water. The water that infiltrates into the soil recharges the ground water supply. That is how it works. Disadvantages of pervious concrete. The first is that it cannot be used on pavements with heavy traffic flow pervious concrete or pervious pavements are only for low volume roads it requires longer curing time particularly when you talk about pervious concrete difficult to find out water content in fresh concrete conventional concrete test like slum test and compaction factor test are not applicable to pervious concrete it requires a specialized construction practice a special design consideration need to be implemented and finally it requires regular cleaning to maintain its permeability a porous asphalt pavement is generally a four layer structure 
a surface course, a filter course, a reservoir course, and uncompacted subgrade. The surface course typically consists of 50 to 100 mm of special, specially designed porous or open graded asphalt mix. This mix is often referred to as an open graded friction course. This filter course ranges between 50 to 75 mm consisting of open graded crushed aggregate either treated with asphalt or untreated. It provides filtering capability as well as a providing a suitable per plate form for paving. The reservoir course is comprised of 50 to 75 mm single size aggregate at a depth determined by the storage volume required. And the reservoir depth typically ranges from 250 mm to 900 mm in depth. And below that is the uncompacted subgrade soil. In case of porous concrete pavement, here also you need a pervious concrete and below that you have a reservoir and then subgrade enhancement means a geotextile layer and below that you have subgrade. So provide a concrete curve or a concrete curve with gutter for edge support. These barriers can also keep unwanted sediment off the pavement. When you are providing the interlocking concrete pavement, this is a typical section of a permeable interlocking concrete pavement. Here you need concrete pavers and the joint between these two is filled with the sand. Then below that you have a 50 millimeter bedding layer and below that you have 8 to 10 millimeter chalk course and then reservoir and a layer of geotextile which is optional. It depends upon the soil condition and then you have subgrade. Now here also on the side of the pavement you can provide a curb here so that it can provide edge support. These barriers can also keep unwanted sed sediment of the pavement. Design criteria as given in Caltrans Storm Water Quality Handbooks of July 2023 for pervious pavement is that the pavement surface and reservoir layer must be designed to support the maximum traffic load. The structural design process will vary according to the type of pavement section selected, means where you are selecting porous asphalt or pervious concrete or interconnected blocks. Design process will change with the type of pavement. In addition, the reservoir layer must be able to temporarily store the water quality volume and therefore it is important to know how much volume of water is to be stored in the reservoir. When determining the overall thickness of the pavement structure, it must satisfy both the pavement structural design and the reservoir layer design. The structural design of pervious pavement considers four main elements, total traffic, in situ soil strength, environmental elements like pollutants and pavement sections, pervious layer, bedding layer, reservoir layer and fabric design. This is what is given in Caltrans Storm Water Quality Handbook. But FSWA guide for design of pervious pavement consider three criteria. One is site considerations to ensure that the site is acceptable. Hydrological design to ensure the porous pavement meets the potential storm water runoff demand and structural design to ensure that the porous pavement withstands the anticipated traffic loading. Most often the thickness of the stone recharge bed will be controlled by the water quantity and soil infiltration rate rather than structural requirement, while the porous asphalt surface layer will be determined by the traffic load. So the first, first criteria is site considerations. Generally, soil infiltration rate is in the range of 2.5 mm per hour to 250 mm per hour depending upon the type of soil. What the guide suggests that do not place over known sink holes. Do not place your pavement over known sink holes. Minimum depth to bed bedrock or seasonal high water should be greater than 2 feet. The bottom of the infiltration bed should be flat. For roads, it may be necessary to construct berms under the pavement surface to retain water on slopes and install drains at low points. For parking area, the slope of the porous pavement surface should be less than 
for slope greater than 5% the parking area should be terraced with berms in between the second criteria is hydrological design here reservoir depth is estimated using this equation water quality depth divided by 0.3 0.3 is the amount of air voids then infiltration rate k is given by this equation d upon t into sf into 0.3 this is again the void ratio in the reservoir layer d is the depth of the reservoir t is the drawdown time typically 72 hours and sf is the safety factor you can take 1 you can take 1.2 once you know that the step 3 will be to determine kc that is infiltration rate used to set the upper compaction limit of site area and this kc will depend upon the soil group important point here is to ensure that this kc is more than k the infiltration rate k which you calculate using this equation should be less than the infiltration rate of the soil this condition means that the water quality depth can infiltrate into the soil within the given time when the infiltration rate cannot drain the wq depth that is water quality depth in the specified drawdown time the site should be eliminated what it does this mean it means that if this condition is not satisfied then the site is not good for pervious pavement then fifth step is to determine the reservoir depth based on the pavement structure design requirement also and take the higher of the two the depth which you get from hydrological consideration and the depth which you get from structural consideration the third point is structural design you can use either isto method or irc method when you are using isto method to design the or the porous asphalt pavement then the structural coefficient for porous asphalt are suggested as 0.4 to 0.42 asphalt rated permeable base 0.3 to 0.35 and stone recharge bed you can take excess coefficient in the range of 0.1 to 0.14 the recommended minimum compacted thicknesses of porous asphalt as suggested in fswa document is 2.5 inch for parking or with little or no trucks 4 inch for residential streets with some trucks and 6 inch for heavy traffic conditions heavy trucks typical properties and characteristics for asphalt surface layer as per fswa air void should be more than 16% should be determined as per asto or astm standards the drain down should be less than or equal to 0.3% that is in your top layer and asphalt content for a nominal maximum aggregate size of 9.5 mm minimum asphalt content suggested 5.75% and the maximum aggregate size for surface cores is 12.5 nominal maximum aggregate size that is how we design the permeable pavements thank you very much for watching this video if you have any question you can write in the comment box